We are out here at one of our Kuroko type VMS deposits. Just thought I'd walk around here and show this a bit. This is Copper Canyon Creek. You have a major fault running alongside the creek. Loads of quartz veins with mineralization, loads of samples. We've done some XRFs on some of the samples with high gold. Up here, your fault continues. You have five showings up in the creek there. Behind this tree, there is a small adit which goes in about 20 meters. You can see the rocks here from the mine dump. So up just off the side of the creek there. Here we have the mouth of the adit. There's wood bracing across there and uh, looks like old rail tracks. Just off this way in the shaft over there you can see a granitic rock so obviously your contact is fairly close within 10 meters of the creek. So we're just over 10 meters away from the creek. Here you have schists. You have a little bit of a quartz veinery here with nothing in it. And I'm about 30 meters away from your silicus host rock. And down over here, is that small little shaft. Farther down where that flagging tape is over there. Is the other shaft and you have granite in the dump there and you can see it in the shaft. The schistose rock in here hosts lots of mineralization, lots of Float and grab samples. So basically we're standing on the top of one big tall mound. Other side is where your blue clay deposit is. Here's some of your granitic rocks. Basically we have multiple contacts in this area as well as a major fault running from the top all the way up. So we're making our way away from the creek. We're about uh, 100 meters away, 150 meters away from that little adit. And you start seeing some oxidized exposures here with pyrotization cutting through some of the rock. So this rock looks like it's slightly tefacious, but also silicious. So over here in this exposed bedrock, you can see pyrotization And if you make your way down here, this is a newer road that was built. They built up over top of the old road. There is your bedrock. Now we are about 200 meters away from the creek. 
we've dug some test fits in certain areas and exposed some pretty interesting Kuroku material. There was one we dug when this was actually dry. You can see the blue clay on top. A couple more, which are now filled with water. So this material has been assayed and I will attach those assay results so you can get a better look. Over here, we've dug a few more pits. We dug one here, but it's obviously been filled in, possibly by people driving over. You can just see all the oxidized soils here. A few more here. So in these holes here, we dug down one meter and then we were able to core in with a hand auger another 50 centimeters. So here you go, you can see the malachite staining there from the presence of copper. There is also an electromagnetic anomaly exactly in this area. I will also attach that in this video. Another couple test pits there. This area has really oxidized soils running down another 75 meters, spills over the bank and continues. We did find some honey colored material down here and a little bit of clay, but I think it's probably a bit deeper here. There's one of the test pits. So, from what we can tell, we have approximately a 50 by 50 meter area where you find this blue clay almost a meter thick in most areas. Mineralization is consistent with a Kuroku type deposit. Between the creek and here, we have a nice VMS deposit somewhere in here, which is causing this blue clay mineralization.
Here is a typical piece of your bedrock. You can see it's a silicous rock. Along this whole road here, anywhere there's bedrock exposed, that's your bedrock. Two separate samples were sent in to Bruce Northcott. He's the regional geologist for this area. And he had an analysis ran on both of them. So again, assay results to follow.